Welcome to today's Career Month program. My name is Sam Constance. I work with the Alumni Career Development Team here at the University of Chicago. Thank you for joining us today. I'm delighted to, to welcome you to our webinar titled How to Build Strong Team Culture in the Era of COVID-19, featuring some pretty spectacular alumni panelists. But first, I'm going to start off by introducing our moderator for today's session, Deneen Gillespie. Danina is a leader versed in marketing and operations, highly skilled at developing and nurturing successful teams. With over 20 years of experience at the University of Chicago, Danine led the development of a new marketing division, oversaw the successful completion of major branding projects and initiatives, created an award-winning marketing materials, and was integral in developing communications at the University of Chicago campaign, Inquiry and Impact. She's now serving as the Director of Intellectual Engagement and Alumni Experiences, and Deneen seeks to provide intellectual, professional, and social value for our most loyal alumni community. That's you guys. Um, Deneen holds her Master's in Integrated Marketing Communications from DePaul and a Bachelor's in Communications from Roosevelt University, and that is certainly enough for me with some great alums on the panel. I'm going to turn it over to Deneen. Thank you so much, Sam. And again, welcome everyone. We are really delighted to be here. I am uh, very excited to have this conversation with our alumni panel to talk more about culture. Uh, but before we begin, I'd like them to introduce themselves and tell us a, briefly about their experience. So I'm going to pop it over to Dave Fisher to introduce himself. Hi, Deneen, thank you. Um, I, I, just as, as it would happen uh, with a technical glitch, I'm getting a little notice that says I've got an unstable internet connection. So let me introduce myself and then I'll try to fix that. So, uh, hi, I'm Dave Fisher. I am an 87 graduate of the college. And uh, currently I'm a vice president of a, an aerospace company called uh, Astroscale. And we have been doing remote work almost 100% since March. So uh, really, when, uh, uh, when Denise and Sam reached out, uh, I was uh, really excited to take part in this and, and share some of the, the, the tips and the experiences that, that we've had in uh, uh, really shifting everything that, that we're doing. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. I'm gonna pass it to Ryota. Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryota Sakine. I graduated from the college in 2013 as a bio major. In my senior year, I co-founded QB with my classmates through the College New Venture Challenge. Um, a, a little bit about QB. QB manufactures fitness products for fitness beginners. The company is known for the QB seated elliptical machine, it looks like this, which is helping thousands of people stay active at home, especially during the COVID lockdown. And for over seven years, I've uh, managed the operations and supply chain for the business until a private equity acquisition just last month. And I really look forward to sharing how uh, QB has been cultivating a mission-driven and customer-first uh, culture. And thanks for having me. Thank you, Riotta. Shuba. Oh, there we go. No, I think you're muted. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Shubha Chaudhuri. Uh, I'm a 2010 uh, grad from Chicago Booth School of Business. Um, currently, I'm working as the head of uh, HR, so people and culture for a national nonprofit, Equal Opportunity Schools. Uh, we're based out of Seattle, um, and we work with uh, districts and schools across the U.S. to find um, black, brown, and low-income students into uh, rigorous courses. I'm really excited to be here and talk about my experiences um, helping our entire organization adjust to the remote culture. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Shuba. I, you know, this is great. I, I really want to jump in right to our topic because we don't have a lot of time. And it's such a big, team culture is just an amorphous uh, word. And so I'd like to think about and hear from you more about what that definition is. Um, and I just want to read to you something that I read in Forbes the other day that really, really stuck out to me. It said, this is the culture in the time of COVID-19. Employees feel like they are on an island all alone. 
Long gone are the days of drive-bys, the ability to stop by your employee's desk to see how they're doing, or the ability to pop into your manager's office to talk. In addition to getting work done, these drive-bys were great for building relationships and making small talk, thereby increasing trust among team members. So now we're all forced to find new ways to reestablish team culture, this big uh, word that we all refer to, it has a new definition. So I'd like to hear from you on what is that definition and how are you cur currently facing it now? I will pass that to Riota to answer first. Sure, so for me, so pretty simple um, in terms of culture, I, I feel that a good culture is, well, a, a good corporate culture is a culture in which I, I feel excited to wake up every morning and go to work. And it doesn't matter if that is online or offline in person. And I feel encouraged, motivated to wake, wake, wake up every morning and, you know, be at work. I mean, I feel like that is the, at least my definition of a great culture. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Dave? Yeah, actually, I, I really like that definition. Mine, mine has always been somewhat close to that, which is that um, I, I look forward to seeing my colleagues, right? Um, and 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 that's, that's kind of good in this culture because you can see your colleagues like we're all doing here, you know, all Brady bunched up on, on the screen. Or, or you can see them in person, but there's, there's definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of challenges in, in, in trying to establish culture and, 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 and trust uh, in, in this sort of environment. And, and what are those ways, I'm glad you brought up challenge because there are certainly lots of challenges that we have. How do you go about addressing those? And, and likewise, what are some of the opportunities on the other side of that? Shuba, would you like to answer that? Um, sure. So um, the way I'm thinking about it and experiencing it is that uh, when you think of an organization or even a team, uh, what drives some of that culture is having a common goal or a mission that everybody is working towards. Uh, so as you talk about an opportunity, I think uh, in our organization, what we've done is um, spend some time once COVID hit us to just go back to those basics of why are we here? Uh, why is this work critical? As I said, we work to find students who are um, not seen and uh, identify them for courses that you know um, that you know they can perform to be ready for college. So each of us in our roles are really passionate about that mission. So this was an opportunity for us to kind of go back to that mission and goal um, and kind of keeping that centered. And I think that really helped us um, as we kind of uh, understood the impact of COVID on that work as well. Um, the other thing that you uh, briefly touched was about uh, this feeling of trust uh, in leadership, uh, where the company is going, and in your team members, uh, that everybody is kind of focused on um, doing the right thing and taking care of each other. So in our organization, um, what we've tried to do is provide that toolkit and training to our leaders and our supervisors, um, he helping them thinking about how to uh, lead with empathy, um, show their vulnerability because we're all kind of experiencing this pandemic uh, and then being really transparent uh, with how decisions are being made and where we're going. So I think those are some of the things we try to do uh, to keep people, to keep our employees and our kind of our clients centered in our work. Yeah, I think, I think the transparency piece is so key and it, and it, it, it dovetails perfectly into communication, which as I've read through many, many organizations who are doing it right, communication is the number one um, tool that they've used to really increase uh, trust among team members and, and honestly, ROI. So how, how are your organizations answering the call to yeah. good communications right now where it's very, very noisy? I, I, I think, you know, there's, there's always a balance, right? But I, I think we are... Uh we're erring uh, on the side of over communicating, right? So, so, so part of transparency is really sharing uh, everything and, and sharing frequently. 
Uh, we're we're a, a small company, so we're a worldwide company. The the U.S. office is is just a year and a half old. So we've actually hired about a dozen people via Zoom, um, and and you know we we we've we've met face to face to do some onboarding, but most of the interview process and then most of the the actual um, onboarding and the work that we're doing is happening like this. It's happening virtually, and and I find that that the, there's a there's, you know, there's always uh, a responsibility on the part of, of leaders to communicate and uh, to, to share what's happening, but I think it's, it's even more, it's amplified now. And, and, and how you do that is, uh, you know, email, everybody's favorite thing to hate, right? But, but email is actually not bad uh, to do that. We use, the, we use Microsoft platforms, we use Microsoft Teams a lot. We have a lot of team chats and we share a lot of information with that. But mostly it's this, and it's, it's this um, with, with cameras on so that you can actually see each other and sort of, uh, sort of it does two things, right? You can sort of gauge how, how a message is landing. You can see if somebody is, is, um, uh, is, is confused by something that you've said, so you can clarify it. But the other thing about being on video is it, it requires attention. And so uh, it, it, it's tiring but it does actually help to make sure that that engagement is, is running at, at 100% and not at 25% because I've got you on video mute. And what I'm really doing is I'm kind of listening to you, but I'm reading my emails too and, and trying to catch up on things, right? I think that's a very fair point. Uh, we have so many different screens open. We have our Zooms, our Outlook open, all the other platforms. Mm -hmm. And so uh, really trying to engage with your employees is so important right now. I, I'm curious what you all are thinking about for the welfare of your employees. Right now mm -hmm. we're in each other's homes. We have kids that are going to school. We're taking care of parents and grandparents. How, how does that play into team culture and, and how are you um, modifying uh, work based on that? Um, well, I can share a few things. Um, so again, in my role kind of as um, the HR lead, what I'm doing is really working with our leaders and our managers uh, to make sure that uh, one, they're looking at the work, um, making sure that the goals we set for this year are realistic. We're um, recalibrating and we've made changes to certain um, goals, understanding that you know, the environment is different. Uh, so making sure we're not putting undue pressure um, that impacts health and wellness. Um, and then as an organization, we've also tried to add resources. So we've established a wellness fund um, that our employees can access. Uh, we've added stipends, uh, you know, as simple as um, internet connectivity, right? We've recognized that us moving remotely, kind of adding things like uh, additional stipends to make sure our employees can focus on work and not other issues that come up with remote environment. Uh, we've expanded our lead uh, benefits we had every Friday off throughout the summer. It was a wellness uh, day to kind of focus on your um, family and other commitments. So we, you know, we did that. Uh, so kind of every level that we can find um, to focus, to let our employees kind of uh, make sure that they can balance uh, work with other commitments. And, and I wanna add something here. So I echo what Chuba you mentioned about finding, striking the balance and at QB, uh, it, it took a lot of time to really find the balance of, of creating a little bit of structure behind the way we do work versus allowing for a lot of flexibility. Um, I, I feel like as human beings, we, we really want clarity. I mean, we want structure in our lives. So, you know, we're, we're doing as much as possible to clarify a lot of the uncertainties that uh, a, a lot of us are going through every day. Um, over the last couple of months, I mean, the city, I, I live in Chicago, but the city started opening up. So if you go downtown, you see people just living lives normally. You walk into a restaurant and people are dining. If you go into the office, there are people out there, right? But, but the issue is just last week, uh, the Illinois government uh, you know, uh, put out a statement that you, you know, they recommend you stay home and stay safe. And a lot of us are thinking, um, I read this in the news, what is the company's position on this? 
And what, what our company did immediately, as, as soon as that statement came out, was that we sent out an email to all of our employees clarifying our position, um, stating that, yeah, the, the government had issued a statement, please stay home, please stay safe. The office is open in case you have to come in. And I feel like that level of clarity and constant communication just helps all of our employees, including ourselves, uh, make better plans. Because if, if, I, if, I was, if I were planning to go into the office every day this week, uh, not having the clarity would have uh, you know, given me a lot more stress. So, it's so true. I think, I think right now, as I said before, it's so noisy that it's important to have clear communications, I think is a strong indicator of, of a good team culture. So I completely agree with that. You know, as, as leaders, we are also going through um, this pandemic and, and, and a crazy year. How do you address your own needs as well as your team needs during this time? Dave, would you like to take that one? Maybe, maybe not as well. Um, so, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a really good question. It's, and, it's, and it's really important for, for everyone to be thinking about that. So uh, Shuba, I love that, that you guys did Fridays off uh, as, as wellness days. I think that's, that's really good. What, but what, what we've done um, is, is similar to that. We've done no meeting Fridays. Uh, and, and it is astonishing uh, how much work you can do on a day when you don't have any, any meetings, right? Um, we've also done no email weekends. And that's been a real challenge uh, for all of us on, on, on the team to, to actually disconnect for those weekends. And I think that's, that's been incredibly important. Um, the, the company I work with is a worldwide company. And so you, you end up with some of these really weird um, uh, schedules because you've got a meeting time that's trying to accommodate uh, time zones around the world. And so it's also important uh, sort of in making that shift from working in an office environment to, to working mainly from home for the last eight or nine months to, to go into a mode where you give yourself permission. And this is, I mean, for somebody like me, I mean, I've worked in an office my whole life, right? It, it's, it's kind of uh, a matter of giving yourself permission in the middle of the day to say, gosh, you know, I started work at, at six o'clock with an international phone call. It's okay to actually take a break in the middle of the day and do, do something that, that I need to do, you know, go work out, go take a walk, go do, do laundry or whatever it is, right? Um, and, and, and that, I mean, I'll admit that's been a bit of a, a challenge for me just to uh, rethink what that structure looks like and still making sure that, that uh, the team knows I'm, I'm available if they need me. Uh, that availability issue, I think, is key in, in understanding how to take care of ourselves and how to, to make sure that, that we're modeling a, a healthy environment for, for the whole team, too. Because if, if, you, if you don't really think it, you're likely to just try to reproduce the office day at home, which is completely impossible to do, right? So I think questioning those, those assumptions when should I start work? When should I, when should I end work? How do I actually erect a barrier between my home office and the rest of my home? Especially, you know, when I'm carrying around a phone with me everywhere that, that has my email on it. Um, these, are, these are really critical questions. Doing things and explicitly stating them to the whole team like Fridays off or no, no meeting Fridays or no email weekends, I think are an important part of that. I love moderating a conversation where I learned so much and already I'm, I'm getting so many great pearls. I think, I think you're absolutely right about that modeling piece. And, and it leads to another question that I have about productivity. One of the things that keeps coming up is how do we know, <clears throat> excuse me, that our teams are productive? Some have said in different organizations that they don't feel that their teams are as productive, which leads to lower morale. And some have said that they actually do feel like they're more productive. So I'm curious how um, you're, you're managing even their productivity and, and to your point, making sure that you're still taking care of your employees at the same time. Riota, do you have any thoughts sure, about so that? 
I, I, I think uh, how productive we are or how we define productivity really depends on the, the, the goals that we set up front. We're, we're only as productive as how far we progress with our goals. So I, I think it starts off with the very beginning phase when as managers or project leaders, when we're setting those goals, um, yeah, j j just to give you an example. I mean, for, for example, I've been part of operations and supply chain. One of our uh, bigger projects during COVID was how do we create a more resilient supply chain? I mean, with, with factories shutting down in China and abroad, one of our biggest concerns was how do we make sure that we keep on delivering products to our customers? And that, that's a big, big project in its own and really had to dissect that into smaller goals. I mean, one of it was first finding potential candidate countries to supplement our Chinese manufacturing. And then from there, uh, setting more finer goals. You know, to what extent do we start these conversations with, for example, Taiwanese factories? I mean, getting those clarity up front it just helped us down the road in, in terms of productivity. And um, I'd have meetings with you know, my coworkers on, on a weekly basis just to follow up on where we're at. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, um, always having that clarity, I think, makes a lot of sense. Shuba, sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Um, I was thinking personally, and also something I've worked with my managers, is to kind of map out what's uh, urgent and uh, important. So just that kind of having a clear view of everything on our plate and kind of mapping that out as, and then starting with what's urgent and important. So. Um, it's been more about making sure that we are really focusing on the things that get us to our outcomes and the mission um, and taking things out uh, so that, you know, the time that we do get to focus on work, we're really working on those things. Uh, that, that's one way that we're kind of looking at work this year. Uh, so it's, it's it, for us, productivity has been in that frame of just kind of looking at very critical work versus um, honestly, yes, I don't think uh, with 50% of our, care, our workforce being caregivers, um, we're not able to focus on everything we'd like to do and we'd like to do everything um, today. And so this is not the year to do that. I think you also have to give people some room. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're working in, a, in an environment that is different than anything any of us has ever faced, right? Some people work from home uh, and so that's not new, but. But working from home in the sort of environment we're in when we've got, uh, you know, I have, I have colleagues who have their, their, their kids at home because schools are closed. That, that colleague is having a very different work day uh, than, than I'm having. Um, I'm, I'm working uh, with, with colleagues who, who um, you know, like to, to uh, work asynchronously, right? They like to do their work late at night and, and maybe it's, it's not at the time when you're gonna reach them. So we've got a lot of different uh, uh, patterns going on and a lot of different constraints. Uh, going on. I think it comes back to over communicating is, is a really important part too. And, and what I mean by that is if I'm working on something, you know, one thing that's going to keep me from doing it is myself, right? I've got a distraction or, or something. But another thing that'll keep me from doing it is, is I'm not getting something from someone else that I need in order to move forward. And so we've, we've really encouraged a culture where, where people are reaching out all the time. I mean, our, our team's chats are, are constantly going off and people are sharing news or sharing things they need help on. Uh, and, and that I think is a, is a really good thing in, in, in this environment. Um, uh, the, the, the other thing is just kind of being aware and, and being kind. If, if somebody is, has uh, um, uh, uh, their, their kids at home and they need to focus their, their priority time on their family today, maybe that means we need to, we need to figure out a way to uh, uh, change our expectations of when something is, is going to be to us. And, and so far, you know, being, um, uh, being able to sort of roll with the punches, you know, sort of adapt and overcome has, has, has worked uh, for us. Um, it's, it's, you know, it leads to some really busy weekends too, right? But, but it's, just, it's just a matter of, of, of balance. Yeah, and I think, I think that a, a adaptation is so important right now because we're really in an environment where we, we have to be agile. 
And that puts different stressors on organizations and personally. So I'm curious about, you all have mentioned mission a lot. I'm curious about how your mission is supporting some of this work where we are. Um, how have you seen that in play? Riotta, would you like to take that? Sure, sure. Um, I, I, I go back to culture and what, what gets up you know, what, what gets us up in the morning. And I feel like it's a lot of it has to do with believing that we are doing work that impacts other people out, out, out there in the world. And for QB, I mean, that, that's been the, the real impetus, not only for starting this company, but also for, you know, making it a lot bigger. I mean, we, we've recruited people down, we started off with three people. Now we have close to 50 people. And a lot of people joined the company because of that that mission. And you know, one of the roles, one of the, one of the jobs of, I guess, executives, managers in any company is to really be the guardian of that mission and the corporate values. And if, if we keep on doing that, uh, it, it really motivates all of our you know, employees. That's wonderful. Shuba, Dave, do you have any thoughts about mission and, and how it relates to this time and agility? Absolutely. Um, so once, uh, you know, once we were in the middle of the pandemic and, you know, we'd kind of spent a few months assessing what the impact of uh, it was on our work, um, we again went back to our students and our teachers, the ones that we actually serve. Um, we did a quick survey to see how our students were feeling in this environment. Uh, and that really informed uh, some of our offerings right now. So we quickly kind of created um, new material. Um, we, we heard from teachers that they needed professional development, um, dealing with students in this new environment, uh, dealing with uh, the impact of the, the, the social justice movement. So uh, we actually uh, took those voices in and our delivery team worked on uh, new offerings. So I think, again, going back to who are we serving and um, how is this pandemic uh, impacting them really helped us kind of motivate and uh, get our staff to, you know, kind of focus on work. Awesome. That's awesome. Dave, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I really resonated with what, uh, with what you said, Riota, about uh, uh, being the, the guardians of the mission. And that, that's something that, that, uh, that we've, we've taken seriously too. So I, I, I didn't actually mention the, 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 the mission of, of the company I work for. So, the, the mission of Astroscale is to, to guarantee uh, a sustainable space environment. And, and so what that means is that uh, we, we build spacecraft that, that, that service or, or remove other spacecraft so that we keep, we keep space a, a safe place. And, and that's a mission that really is a, a fuel for everybody on the team, uh, everyone on the, on the technical, the engineering team, everybody on the business team and the business development team, right? It's, um, it's something that, that, uh, that can unify us together. And we talk about it as a team a lot. And, and we share uh, a, lot of, um, uh, a lot of information out of the popular press or out of the trade press about where this is going. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in space now. So there's no shortage of, of those sorts of things to talk about. And we talk about those. Um, the, um, uh, I, 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 think, I, think, I think mission is, is absolutely that, that critical fuel that keeps it going. And I think it's what binds everyone in the organization together, wherever we are. So we could be working at home. You know, yeah. it's easier to, uh, well, I say enforce mission when we're in the same place physically. But now we're living in a time when everyone's working remotely. But the one thing that binds everyone within the organization is precisely the mission. I think that's absolutely right. I think that's absolutely right. One of the things we're seeing along with uh, the pandemic is the uh, righteous uprisings that are happening uh, all around the world. And they are definitely impacting our organizations. Um, and they're really pushing us to think about and, and, and have programs that foster inclusivity. I'm very curious about how your organizations are answering that call. Shuba, would you like to take that? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sure. Um, so being a part of a nonprofit that kind of centers this 
uh, we do this out in the world. So obviously we have really high standards internally. Um, so, you know, the way we structure our hiring, our onboarding, our development uh, advancements, it's, it's all to make sure that uh, we reflect the communities we serve. Uh, so for us, inclusiveness is, uh, you know, it's been a part of our DNA since we started the organization. Uh, but absolutely, what I have worked in my role is to even adopt the learnings that our, uh, our delivery team is, you know, um, working with. So uh, measures around belonging, uh, measures around, you know, how inclusive our leaders come across us. So there are, what we try to do is um, have those questions be a part of our surveys, um, have those trainings be a part of the development of our managers and our leaders. So we do a lot of this, you know, programmatically to make sure that our internal processes uh, and practices are very inclusive. And it, it, I mean, it, it clearly has to be a part of, of your hiring strategy, right? So, so as I said, we're, uh, our US office is still rather small, we're building up and, and, and <clears throat> diversity and inclusion is, is a really key part to, to what we're doing in our, in our hiring process uh, as well. So another part of it that I think we get to do that a larger company doesn't is that we all know each other uh, and we can all talk to each other uh, and, and we do, excuse me. Uh, um, and, and so, uh, you know, just, just as, uh, I, I believe performance evaluations shouldn't be a conversation that you have once at the end of the year. I think, uh, I think conversations about, and the touch on, uh, diversity and inclusion, the touch on teamwork, the touch on, on being a welcoming environment, the touch on, uh, engagement with, with workplace. I think that, that it's on, it's on all of us to have those conversations continuously, not, you know, at, at, at the end of the year, for instance, and not just with people on your team. Um, we, we've made, um, uh, we've made happy hours, uh, part of our, our, our culture, zoom happy hours, which by the way, we're zoomed out on happy hours. We, we went from every week to every other week. Um, but, but the uh, the rule at, at happy hours you can't talk about work and so it's 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 a it's a conversation where you can really make up for a lot of what's not happening in the office today and a lot of the, the sort of personal interaction you know uh, talking about your weekend your family your kid and and that has actually led to some really good conversations uh, within our company about these very issues about about diversity and inclusion uh, we've had We've had really great conversations among our team about uh, the, the Black Lives Matter movement and about the, the social justice movements that, uh, that, have, that have flourished uh, this year. So it, and it's, it's, I think, tremendous to have, uh, to create an environment, for leaders to create an environment where people can have that conversation and, and where it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a jargon, right, but a safe space, right? But you can have that, that conversation uh, without uh, uh, without a concern that you're you're um, uh, you're crossing some sort of line, which I think is is a real concern in in some organizations. Yeah, so create that space so you can listen and learn and 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 adapt. I think that's I think that's very powerful. So you all spoke a lot about onboarding, and this is a very interesting time to be onboarded. I I just started um, with our team in April and you lose the ability to gain traction with social capital. You really do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you're new to the organization, you really aren't quite sure of what that culture is. You don't know what you're stepping into. H how do you help your employees um, get acclimated and on board properly? H how has the, have, have you seen that during this time? Riota, do you wanna take a stab at that one? Well, I mean, it, it, it's been a very different time. I mean, I, I've been with my company QB for you know, almost eight years, and it's really the first year in which we've hired at least 10 people virtually. I mean, we, we haven't met you know, any, like a lot of our employees in person just, just because of the, the COVID closures. Um, a year ago, a lot of the hiring would, you know, it, it would go through the standard process. Uh, first round would be most likely phone calls, right? And then second round, we call 
the candidates into the office. Third round, we call candidates into the, into the office. Uh, this year, I, I feel like a lot of the, the interviews happened all on Zoom, um, all the way from first round to final round. And with first round interviews, you know, when, our, our mentality is why, why bother getting on a phone call if we can just get on a Zoom call. So a lot of Zoom conversations and you know, we, we've had team members who were part of this company for over four months, six months, but I haven't seen them in person yet. So, so the, it's, it's a very different time that we live in. Uh, in terms of after we get employees on board. I, again, I want to go back to Dave's point. I mean, it, it's a lot of this is about over communication, be, being very intentional and deliberate about uh, reaching out. And so our, our company has a dedicated community manager. So some like an office manager who mm. role right now is to you know, create these opportunities for our new hires, mm. our new employees to connect. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, buddy systems, right? Match, matching existing team members with new team members and almost like a, like a buddy system of, and, and making sure that the new hires are onboarded. Um, other initiatives such as uh, doing onboarding lunches, um, subsidizing lunches, you know, Grubhub and letting people connect mm -hmm. online. So I, I think it's really important to be intentional and deliberate. And in, in our company, uh, we have a dedicated person to help uh, facilitate the onboarding process and the, and the, the engagement that follows. Hmm. I love this idea of creating like this ecosystem for new employees with their own communities. That's, that's fabulous. Any other thoughts on onboarding? So when we um, onboard... Sure. Uh, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Shuba. No, 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 go ahead. Um, yes, and so I think echoing uh, some of the thoughts that have already been shared, we do try to create cohorts. So we've also been hiring a lot of people and we try to do it uh, at the same time of every month at least. So uh, they go through the same experience together. Uh, we make sure that, uh, of course, we've translated all of this into the online Zoom um, space, but we make sure that a new employee uh, understands deeply you know, the work we do, they meet um, each of our functional leads uh, who kind of cover uh, what each area of our organization does. Um, we have social clubs. So, you know, we encourage them to, uh, you know, get, get involved in some of the social clubs we have. Um, and as we, you know, some of the other things we talked earlier about uh, how do we maintain the connection uh, in this uh, environment is, we do have things like uh, virtual coffee, virtual game nights. Um, we've established a speaker series where we have uh, external um, leaders uh, in other nonprofits working on social justice and equity come in uh, and talk about the work they do. So we have our staff kind of coming together to hear about those um, updates. And we've also done uh, things like a CEO share. Uh, so our CEO is really accessible, so he does events where new hires can join in and kind of share straight from our CEO's perspective, um, what we're doing and what our priorities are. So we create a lot of these um, touch points. So a cohort and then all these kind of touch points for our employees to new hires to kind of uh, integrate with our workforce. So I feel like we've heard that that's really been helpful for them to uh, feel connected in this new environment. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Dave? Yeah, you know, I was, I was going to say that we, we've, we've been uh, putting a lot of attention. We're, we're very explicit when we talk about what our culture is and what behaviors uh, we want to see that are, that are consistent with that culture. And so the, in the hiring process, you know, you, you, you're hiring for cultural fit. And, and the downside about that is sometimes hiring for cultural fit can mean I'm going to hire somebody like me. Uh, uh, and, and so you, you have to, you have to, you have to fight that. And one way to do it is in the interview process, we're, we're very explicit about our culture. Uh, um, uh, we're, we're pretty proud of the things we put together that describe the kind of culture we want and the kind of behaviors that support it. So we talk about those, um, and, you know, rather than, than dance around it and kind of try to guess what somebody's like, you have a conversation about it. And that's the kind of conversation that I think you can have 
just as um, uh, realistically and effectively via Zoom as you as you could in person. And then and then the onboarding process, we've we've got uh, an explicit section where we talk about our culture and the behaviors and the expectations. And so we were able to sort of you know, open that conversation in the interview process, reinforce that conversation uh, in the onboarding process. And then, you know, if we're doing it right, that's actually the culture then that, that our new employees find themselves in. Uh, and it's hard because we're remote, but, uh, but we, we, we still, we can, we can make sure that that is the culture, you know, modulo everything about Zoom that we're all working in. That's great, that's great. I'm curious before we move on to, because our audience has a couple of questions, but I'm curious about the lessons you've learned over these last few months. What, what has changed? What has remained the same uh, for your management style in, in, during this pandemic? Shuba, would you like to take that one? Um, sure, uh, that's a great question. Um, so I think what has, uh, stayed the same is absolutely kind of um, as a manager, as a leader, kind of focusing on the um, your team's well-being, um, like looking at them as a person and not just someone you work with. So focusing on relationships and trust, um, you know, communicating with transparency, um, or some of the things we've already talked about, kind of really making sure that um, your team feels uh, supported, connected, um, but I think what's changed is, uh, again, being able to function and being able to support through this um, unprecedented kind of environment. So being flexible, uh, more flexible than you, you know, might have uh, imagined to nine months back. So um, exploring creatively kind of other ways to collaborate together. So being open to using new tools. Uh, so some of the things that I've seen is uh, just that level of flexibility, that level of um, ambiguity, uh, being comfortable in those uneasy spaces. Uh, I think that, that's been a, a little different. Uh, that, that's been my experience. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. You said something that really resonated, which is that flexibility uh, in the midst of ambiguity, because mm -hmm. things are constantly changing. And so, um, for someone like me, that was very, very hard at the beginning. But now that we've been in it for so long, I, I'm so, tr almost getting used to it. Not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm certainly working on it. Any other thoughts from you, Dave or Ariota, about that topic? Any lessons that you've learned that you'd like to share with some of our managers uh, here? You know, I, I don't. I don't think the fundamentals of, of managing or leading change, but I think that this environment has amplified it. Uh, you know, as, as we've talked about throughout this this hour, more flexible, more communicative, more transparent, um, kinder. Uh, I, I think. I think all of that is. It, you know, presumably we're all doing that before this happened, right? But it's just it's 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 amplified now. Um, I I think. There are certain things that, that uh, the, the pandemic has forced upon us that, that we can take advantage of as well, right? Um, uh, I think maybe we're communicating better and not just more. And so we need to remember that and take that out on, on the other side of this. Um, there've been some really cool collaborations that we've been able to do using online tools. You know, when you can, when you can do a, a Zoom meeting where you can see each other and then you can also collaboratively edit a document over on another screen, that's actually pretty powerful. And I don't know that we were doing that before the pandemic as much. So that's another one of those things we can take over. So, you know, sort of the, you know, taking the lemon and making lemonade out of this is, is you know, trying to remember what those, um, uh, what those new things we learned are that we can carry over when we get back to I, whatever. It's not normal that we're going to go back to, but whatever it is, we go back to. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think I think you're absolutely right. It's it was a few things that we certainly had not tried um, because we were in person, and now that we've been forced to do it, it's it's certainly been additive to our organization as well. Actually, there is a question that that 
talks a little bit, speaks a little bit to the point you made about when we go back to, to normal. So um, from the audience, uh, there is a question, given the recent news from Pfizer and Moderna on the vaccine, if we get back to normal by mid next year, what are the changes you feel will persist and which will revert back to normal in terms of work-life balance, corporate events and work from home culture? Mm -hmm. Really good question. Um, I I think what you're already seeing, at least for some of the larger organizations, are they are considering the hybrid model going forward. So um, even beyond kind of COVID, giving uh, employees some more flexibility in choosing um, that work-life balance. So whether it's partial or completely remote, um, at least my organization, that's how we're thinking about it, uh, to kind of work together to see what employees feel most comfortable doing. Um, Obviously, it has to work for the role and the function, uh, but providing that kind of hybrid model going forward where, because there are generational differences uh, for preferences, we do hear that there are certain, um, you know, certain employee groups that are preferring this model, but there are others that really feel that they need to be in the office space to collaborate and communicate. So uh, I don't think there's a one size fits all, but I do think there will be there is some, again, to Dave's point, there are certain things that are good about the situation. It's normalizing some of the um, maybe uh, concerns of kind of working remotely as more organizations are seeing that there are certain groups and certain functions that are as efficient or, uh, you know, are benefiting from this new environment. I think companies are also evolving their approach. So I do think uh, going forward, we will see more of a hybrid model when it comes to office location, work location. Yeah, com completely agree. We're definitely seeing that with events, right? The, 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 mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fact that we can now um, reach our broadest audience, including international, uh, is, has been huge for us, as I'm sure it has been for your organization. Any other thoughts about that question? You know, I, I, I miss traveling. Uh, <laughs> I, I've 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 yeah. I've taken um, I've actually taken three flights uh, since since this all started, which is more than than many people I know. But but you know uh, I'm 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 running a business development team, and not being able to have the the, the, the interactions, the face to face interactions, the the conferences and the trade shows, with with colleagues in the industry as well as with with prospective customers, is is a real um, a, a real shift in in the way in the way we do business and getting back to that, I think that people are going to be more intentional about why they're doing those kinds of business trips and what they intend to get out of it. And I think I think we we probably took them for granted before the the pandemic, and now we realize uh, just just how valuable they are. So I, I, I suspect that that, uh, that that we'll see. Um, we'll see a lot more intention, intentionality going into conferences and trade shows and, and business travel in general. That's right too. Riotta, any thoughts? Well, I, I agree with both of you. Um, well, I think a work would definitely become more of a hybrid model um, and just really staying flexible. Uh, our, our office will be open at any time. I mean, our, our employees could come in anytime um, but but if, if they don't feel comfortable going back to work every day you know, come next year then it, you know we will definitely build in uh, flexibility into our our hr to make that possible great that's great one more question from the audience it, it, beyond the items already mentioned uh, like stipends, summer Fridays off, and Zoom happy hours. Are there any other benefits that you've found to offer employees during this time? And they said looking for benefits to replace previous benefits like snacks in the office, social events. And Riota, I think you spoke a little bit about this with some of the free Grubhub lunches, which sound fantastic. Um, are there other things like that that we're thinking about uh, for our employees? I, I'm going to steal Riota's idea. <laughs> I know it's a good one. 
I, it is. Just, I'm just going to add something here. I mean, our, our company is still pretty small, um, under 40 people, so or close to 50 people. Um, so we, we, we have we still have the ability to, you know, appreciate all of our members, staff members individually. So what we've been doing is, yeah. is just allocate a little bit of budget to send out gifts from Amazon. It could, it could take the form of Amazon gift cards or we will literally ask around, you know, what is, what does Shivani like? And, and we'll buy something online and send it to her door. Yeah. And all, like all of us, right? Like all of us, including managers, employees, we, we love being appreciated. So that, that's something that yeah, we've been uh, continuing um, regardless of offline, online. Yeah. Well, and I think it speaks to the investment in your teams and how important that is, especially during this time. So it's, it's certainly one that um, I'm noting as well. One, one last question, and this one is for Dave. Maybe I have time for two more questions. Um, it says maybe an off top topic question, um, but would appreciate your views on the space industry and its future. Um, given the successful second successful SpaceX and NASA launch yesterday before astronauts. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think there's a very bright future for the space industry. And, and one thing that, that, that you can look at is, is, is what's, what's been the pace of, of the space industry since March. And, and it's, it's actually gone on pretty much um, uh, unaffected. Uh, so you're still seeing launches. You're still seeing uh, programs moving forward. Uh, we we actually um, uh, just completed a, a, our Series E uh, fundraising round. Uh, we we raised uh, uh, 51 million in that round. So so that speaks to uh, I believe a lot of investor confidence in the in the in the market uh, as well. So yeah, it's um, I'm 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 really bullish on on the space market uh, in general and. And the fact that the pandemic has has not really uh, impacted it uh, terribly uh, has been, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of a stress test, I guess. And, and, and I think we came through well. That's wonderful news. That's wonderful news. Switching gears uh, with just ending with a little bit of a fun topic. What is your one work from home miss, must have? What is the one thing that you have to have, not your computer, but what is that one thing that you need? Uh, I, 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 have, uh, I have two dogs who are both uh, outstanding office assistants. And so I'm always doing much better when I've got my puppies in my office with me. <laughs> That's awesome. A little encouragement from puppy love. Shuba? <laughs> it's the opposite for me. I have uh, two boys under for so they're not uh, fun for work but um, I really love my standing desk so I think um, I really appreciate uh, having access to that when I work that's awesome that's awesome I actually bought a standing desk uh, mod like a modified standing desk and it is one of my favorite things I love that I'm mm -hmm. able to stand up and and now though I have to go to over to QB and get my elliptical so I yeah, can stay I know. And, mm -hmm. and get a workout, right, Rio? Right? <laughs> so I, of course, I have my QB under my desk. And I also love cooking nowadays. I mean, I cook every day. I, I think I can open a restaurant after everything's over, you know, maybe an Italian restaurant or an Indian restaurant. Wow. Wow. Well, that's that's <laughs> impressive. That's impressive. Listen, thank you all so much for your time and, and your wonderful, wonderful tips. We really appreciate it. It was wonderful moderating this discussion. And thank you, Sam. Yes, yes, I echo Deneen's thanks and, and thank you to, to you, Deneen, as well. Um, this was a spectacular discussion. A lot of really great uh, actionable tips were discussed. So we really appreciate all of your time. Ryota, we'll all be seeing you at your Italian Indian restaurant, hopefully shortly when COVID <laughs> is over.